You ready, Nuno? You ready, buddies?
um, where managers and agents go and they kind of you become know, a model, you do some skits, there's some acting involved in the conventions. Uh, and that's how my manager found me at Seven. She, I did a, someone I forget what commercial, what skit I did. Um, but she found my mom and she was like, she is adorable, I would love to work with you guys. Like, I really, I see a lot of potential. And my mom was like, yeah, you know, sure, let's, let's try it, right? You know? I would like to slip that in there. She's um, adorable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so and the audition for her voice was one of the very first auditions that I went to. And I remember I was with my mom and my brother, and it wasn't, you know, a lot of times you audition for things and it takes a long time to hear back and all of these things, but it didn't take a long at all. Um, we found out pretty soon. And we were so excited, you know, to be a part of some, you know, just the show and all of these different things. But we didn't know what was going to happen. And it didn't air until three years later. So we worked on it for a long time. Um, I remember when it first aired and sitting there and like watching it to be on the of my car. It's, it's such a surreal feeling, you know, like to hear like that. Your voice. Like, so many people are listening and you know to get that opportunity and to see how much she's grown, how much she's teaching you guys, like being a part of your family. And I know you know children's programming is so special to families because you don't watch that alone sometimes. And sometimes people do, and that's even impactful because that it's so much it means so much to them. But, yes, but when you spend those moments with your family and you never forget those moments. It's like all the nostalgia. It's it's amazing. So, I love that. Yeah. I love it. And for you to be a young actor and to have an iconic role right out of the gate, does that set a bar for you? Where you're like, okay, now I expect all my my roles to be just like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's that same part. It's like, oh, you know, you never know. There's that one phone call that's going to change your life, right? And even here, I look around, and some of these people have like you know like multiple iconic characters under their belt. I was like, oh, how many phone calls are you allowing in your lifetime? I was like, I've had one, and I've had multiple, you know. But something as big as her, I was like, okay, maybe there's another phone call. <laughs> yeah, but you know, just having one is like it, it's amazing, and how much an iconic character can not change the lives of everyone watching, but also my own. It, it changed my life completely. My, my parents are immigrants from Peru. Um, we grew up in Queens. I have a brother, and it be, being cast, it really did change our lives as a family. So, love that. Uh, considering that you were so young, and it wasn't necessarily your drive, um, is there something that you would be doing if you weren't? In that you wanted to do back then? What, since you didn't tell your mom, like, I'm gonna be an actor, what did you want to do? So, I'm easily influenced and <laughs> <laughs> So growing up, if I was watching like some movie about like a flight attendant, I'd be like, no, nope, that's it. I want to be a flight attendant, that's it. And every little thing that I would watch, I would fall in love with some, uh, there was an episode that we did one time where, um, uh, her mom was like an archaeologist, and I was like, no, nope, that's what I want to do. I'm going to go to school for that. Like everything, I would want to do it all, and so it's hard for me. To no, that's fair. That's fair. I probably would tell you that I would probably have like seven different careers if I wasn't doing this. Just all seven. <laughs> it's hard to pick one. I'm very indecisive. Or if you do that, so that makes sense. Like I yeah. can see that imprinted on you. You're like, no, I'll just read into my backpack and I'll pull out one of the skills. I got you. Say less. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Backpack is one of my favorite characters, and uh, as, a, as a great resource for kids to um, have something that makes you proud um, of what you can do and have something that helps you, it's huge. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the core of what Dora represents. When it comes to your impact, um, what sort of fan reactions have you had that have had the most impact in that regard? Where they see you go, you know, this is what you did for me. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about diversity, a lot of it happened or like what happens when I was younger I didn't have a lot of things to connect to um, you know when I watched TV or you know children children's program especially even in animation you know there wasn't a lot of characters that were Latina mm -hmm. maybe not even any uh, so you know yeah so and it was big for them to share that with their family members and and then you always hear like 
Some of you out there also, they're like, you know, I, I love Dora so much. I had her hair cut. I wore her backpack to school. People made fun of me. But that, that love for Dora is like, I don't know. I don't know. I understand it. And then sometimes I don't understand it. But like, look how here she is. And you know, when you connect with a character like that, and you want to go to school and live your life like looking like a character, I think that, that's so amazing. It, it really shows how impactful and how important she is, right? Can you guys agree? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Woo -hoo. Of course. Now, I also have to give love to the fact that Dora, as a female lead, um, gave a lot of voice to young girls that in a time where cartoons and whatnot might be a little bit more boy-centric. Um, is that something, too, that also has shown itself as an impact uh, from you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because you would assume that right from the beginning, but doing these conventions, I don't see that. You see well, everyone. Everyone comes up and is like, I grew up watching Dora. It wasn't like, you know, some are watching Jess Diego or some are watching this Dora. Like, they were like, oh, Dora, Dora. <laughs> no shame. I was like, no, 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 it's amazing. And she has her friends, you know, and, and like you were mentioning before, like, it's not just a female need. Like, she's teaching you that you can either have a backpack full of stuff, but also the importance of asking for help, yes. right? That you don't have to do things by yourself. You have, you can use people around you and anyone. Just never be afraid to ask for help because we all need help. We can't do it alone, you know? I love this. Now, okay, I have to ask a very personal question. This yes. is slightly embarrassing, but considering the time that you had to wait for uh, the, the show to actually come out, and by the design of the show where you're asking questions of the audience and saving time, for a response, uh, did you actually answer back any time? Listen, how many of y'all answer back when she asks questions? Come on, let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? We, I'm, I'm yelling at the TV all the time. Yeah, that was me too. So did you, did you ever do that? Yes, but it's funny because, um, you know, reporting, I just read the lines, like, you know. Right, right. Like, Who do we ask for help, but we don't know which way to go? I'm not sitting in the booth like, <laughs> and then, then I did my next song, so when I see it all come together, and I'm like, wait, how long is this? <laughs> like, I don't know how long, how many pauses, you know, on the script it says pause, but it doesn't tell you pause, pause, pause. <laughs> so when I saw it, and it all came together, I was like, okay, so this is going to be a thing now, right. you know? Right. So it's so funny, even on my social media, like, I'll just ask questions, and I'll just... <laughs> But I don't do that in real life. I hope I don't. Know. Well, <laughs> so we'll find out. We'll find out the rest of the family. That's what's happening. You'll just ask me questions. Right? I know. What do yeah. you think the answer is? <laughs> Where is the microphone? Um, but no, I thought that that was one of the most engaging pieces because that's one of the things that makes the show so great. Yeah. Is you break the fourth wall and you allow the audience to be a part of the show. And at a time where, again, um, child education material was kind of needing a resurgence, that was fabulous. Yeah. So in, in you watching it, and granted you were a little bit older once you got to see it, did it still have an impact to you to know, like, this is what this is for. I'm mean, catering to a younger group, and it's actually, like, designed to do that. Yeah, I mean, they definitely told me even the power of free, right, when you're learning, which is why Dora repeats a, a lot of things. <laughs> Three times, or you'll see her say three times. Like, sorry, but I'm no this three times. Um, in the map, we went to three different locations, and and I don't, I haven't done the research personally myself. But when it comes to teaching um, younger kids, I think that's very important. So now, when you look back on it, you're like, oh, okay, so that's why she's saying it. She's not saying it because she doesn't hear me, even though I'm yelling at her. <laughs> she's saying it because she's trying to teach me. Right. And even like when she's teaching. Spanish or Spanish words, you'll probably see that same word come up in the episode a few times. So, and even the few Spanish words, I feel like some of you have come up to me and said, you know, like I'll never forget the word, like I'll never forget vamanos or hola or gracias or de nada, like those little words that stick with you for a long time. So, I think the, the, you know, the got some game questions that yeah. uh, I totally want to ask you, and I think we're allowed to have some fans ask some questions at that time. Sure, okay. yeah. If anything, then we can't, then we'll let you know. Yeah, definitely. We'll like, can you? <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Here we I think you might ask this first. I'm sorry. Right, is it open now? Or hey, 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 open. We're going to do the game first. We're going to do the game first. Uh, so, getting into this, this game is kind of crazy. It is a, 
uh, a this or that okay. is the game. Yes. Um, obviously, we're going we're gonna to get very personal here. Okay. So be prepared. Ready? Okay, here we go. Pizza or burgers? Pizza. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You said that so fast. You didn't even think yes. about it. Pizza? Anyway. Pizza. Over a burger? Tea burger. Okay. Okay, so right. now we're going to go a little deeper. Okay. What's on your pizza? Oh, I got you. Hot honey and pepperoni. Hot honey? Where are you? Hot honey. You yeah. Oh, I like honey. honey. What the? Well, I'm from New York, so we have the best pizza. Okay. No matter what anyone else has. It's not a lie. You know, I didn't know what's the pizza place to go to in New York, so I can get hot honey and pepperoni. Um, there's so many places, but my favorite, and I, they have hot honey that you can put on it. It's Prince Street Pizza in Manhattan. Oh, that did have my favorite pepperoni slice there, one. so yeah. You're in the if you're in New York City. Right. Message about the way to the Okay. Okay. Again, yeah, personal. Here yeah. we go. Beach or pool? Oh, beach for sure. Okay. All right. I feel like I'm not a pool. I feel like I want to be a pool person. It just seems like a lot more work than the beach. No. Beach seems very not. Tough. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of just go all day sure. and then that's it. You know, there could be a certain time, but you know. Right. You can kind of like have your own little section. Right. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, no, it's just a private pool. That's not for everybody. Today. That's true. That's true. Yeah, no, beach is fine. I get that. Okay, so now I gotta ask you. Okay, yeah. let's go. Beach, Team Beach. Team Beach. I'm Dominican, so. That's why I said that yesterday too. Was it you? Okay, I was like, I was like, so I said that yesterday. Like, yeah. I'm Dominican, so I'm Beach. Yeah. Team Pool. Anyone Team Pool? That's okay. Y'all didn't raise your hand high. Here's it. I'm going to see you. Don't worry. I have nothing against you. Yeah, yeah. No. Personal pool. I don't want to public pool. Uh, okay. Cupcake or ice cream? Ice cream. Ooh. For sure. I don't know. I, I, really, I like ice cream cake. I'm not really a cake person. Okay. Um, I'm more like a, like a sweet bread person. <laughs> like banana bread. Or that kind of stuff. But for sure ice cream. Not even ice cream cake. Spicy flavor. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. I pralines and cream is oh. up there, but also cookie dough and cookies and cream. Yeah. So I'm not like a top three. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so team cupcakes. Team cupcakes, where do you have? Not that many team. Team ice cream? Team ice cream. Yes. Okay. Cream. All right. Now we got rocking with our flavors. We got yeah. okay. Yes. Okay. I'm saying small version. Yeah. Y'all got some of that? Like, don't no, 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 no. That's fair. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> more fun to drive, gas or electric? Electric. Yes. Same yes. Same yeah, I'm just saying, you know, watch over the planet. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Everyone else want to agree with that? If you say gas, we'll stop looking at it. Yes. Look for the future. Look for the future. Rachel Scooters. I mean, I'm, you might you need to get me one. You can't go as fast with an electric, but you can. That's right. So. All you have to do is truck. But safe driving. Yes. And always wear seatbelts so we can be safe. Okay, so going into the social media world, because obviously social media is everything these days. Which would you prefer, Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Okay. And I feel all like saying all this stuff. So Facebook. Started, you were only allowed to join Facebook mm -hmm. if you were in college. That's true. I don't know if some of you remember that. That's right. But it was a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wouldn't even get it until college. And I feel like Facebook has, I can't even begin to understand how it works. I don't know. I feel like Instagram is just maybe that I've been on longer or it's easier, but it's definitely Instagram all the way. So. In, into the room, let's see. How many of you are team Facebook? I'm Facebook. You're Facebook? I'm here okay. Facebook. How many of you are team Instagram? Instagram. Okay, so I'm going to make a, a harsh, harsh revelation here. I did a uh, yeah, uh, 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 bought by the same company earlier this year, and they told me that Facebook is for old people. I think so. like, it should have been Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because I've heard that too, but they know how to navigate it. I do. I do. Even they figure do. It out. It's like there's so many buttons, so many places to go. I'm like, I can't. See, so that is, you're not old. 
Congratulations. Wow. I'm actually 25, so I'm a big Facebook. So if people say it's old, I'm 25. So I'm just fine. That's what it is. That's what it is. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. Here's how you're in my wheelhouse. It's my stuff right here. Novels or comic books? Uh, okay, so, you know, I want to get better this. about reading, mm -hmm. but I do, I have a tough time okay. reading books. Um, I do get, like, sleepy, and I have to really, like, pay attention when I read. So I do, it's on, like, my list of things to make sure I'm better at is reading. <laughs> Um, but I did start getting into anime from doing the novels. Yes, I started watching some because I want to see what, what you know, everyone is loving. What are you watching? You gotta know. So I started, well, I've been well, I'm up to date on Demon Slayer. Woo! Love it. It's amazing. Yes. I recently found out my husband told me that the story is written by a woman, so that's, that's amazing right. as well. Um, so yeah, that's my first one. I'm gonna keep watching other ones. If you guys have any suggestions, when we open it up, let me know. Um, but yeah, so from watching that, I would like to read uh, comics. That yes. totally counts yeah. comics. So comics. Yes. Like yes. Let's get into that. Okay, so we got a whole room here. How many of you guys are team novels? Okay. Oh, team novels. Team, team comic books, manga, totally counts, webtoons, all that. Yeah. Okay. I like it. It's kind of yeah. split there. Yeah. It's well read team. I like that. Okay, now this one is a very Boston-centric question, and I kind of love it. Um, I, you almost have to say it in accent, so I'm going to try it to see if you do. Uh, which one would you say? I don't know if that's even you. Boston guys. Like, uh, yeah, no, 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 trust me. Boston guys. Or Fenway. Or Boston guys. This is a family. Or Fenway. I mean, yeah. You have no idea what those are. What's this cool? Oh, I know Fenway, but I don't know the first one. Yeah, Boston Garden. Okay, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I'm like, what is that? It's now Teeny Garden, the basketball place. Oh, so this is a whole new note. It's what they gave me. It's a classic place. Okay, so we should go. Yeah, right now. Well, that's why I said this is a trick question, because I'm from New York. So I can't, I don't know if I can answer this question. So you'd be like, that's a square card. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Are all of you guys from Boston? Yeah. Who do you prefer? Who's team? Who's Boston Garden? Who's team Boston Garden? Okay. Who's team Fenway? Team Fenway? All day. Get Fenway right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You gotta get that long issue. I prefer South Bay, though. Right. Um, no, thank you for playing around with that. That was, that was such fun. I think we now know you a little better than we did before. Uh, we have like 10, 15 minutes left, so I want to invite you guys to ask some questions. So if you don't mind lining up, yeah. and if we can keep it to question. one question. When do you see your character and the rest of the other characters Excuse me, in the future? I'm just wondering if you know this thing. Like, I, I didn't just watch like Nickelodeon. I used to also watch like, I mean, Nick Jr. I used to watch Playhouse Disney, but did you ever met other voice actors? Like, you know the guy who voiced the fish, you know, in that film, Stanley? Like, guess, here's the thing. The guy who voiced him is actually this guy who played the father on the nanny, Charles oh, wow. Shaughnessy. It's a small world. Did you ever met them or Sarah Nicole Robles or the Owl House crew or any of the other crew? Because I thought voice actors just had different worlds saying, look, if you're in kids animation, you stick here. If you're regular, you stick here. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. Sharks and the Jets, man. It's like they're in their No, I definitely got to meet some other um, voice actors um, in other children's programming. But, I mean, here at these conventions, I get to meet like so many more other voice actors, which you normally don't get a chance or to. Uh, but at the time, with when Dora was you know, airing and recording, Spongebob was a big thing, so I got to meet the, uh, Tom Kenny multiple times. There you go. He was always so sweet and very nice. Um, so yeah, I haven't seen him in such a long time, but I'm sure it'll, we'll cross paths again soon. Yeah. No, to that end, was your recording process singular, or was it just you in a booth, or did you actually have other people with you? So when we first started, it was like a group of kids. Okay. We were all around the same age, so like six, seven years old, which kind of got chaotic at times. And parents, I'm sure you can attest to having more than two. It gets a little, a little crazy. So um, eventually, it kind of evolved to just me and the boys with boots. And then as we got older, where we really didn't need like a director anymore, right. we knew who the character was. It would just be me on the booth. Yeah. Hello, Fred. Hi. I'm back. Hey, nice to see you again. Hey, nice to see you, babe. 
Okay. So, hi, my name's Dio. Okay. Um, so, my question, so a little backstory. I'm Dominican, but my parents, um, I grew up in a household where my parents never taught me Spanish. So, in school, I was kind of bullied by the other Dominican kids being like, oh, you're a gringo, or oh, you're no sabo kid, stuff like that. So, my question is like, do you have any, like, advice, like, what advice could you give to, like, those kids that, like, kind of struggle with, like, embracing their heritage or, like, dealing with trauma and stuff like that? Watch door. It's a great question, and it's something that I've experienced also. Even voicing an iconic character like that, I still feel I felt that way a lot of times growing up because my parents, like I said, are immigrants. Um, but when my, I have an older brother, and when he was younger, they felt the need to know to always speak to him in Spanish <laughs> to make sure that he knew the language. But then he did struggle when he started going to school, like with comprehension and kind of learning English and all of these things. So they were like, okay, with our next child, we're going to speak to her mostly in English and she doesn't struggle in school as much. Now, my brother definitely knows a lot more Spanish than I do, but growing up, I only spoke to my parents in English, and I learned Spanish by speaking to my grandma. And I think a lot of you guys have similar stories where you would, you know, have to speak. And even with Dora, a lot of times, you know, I knew a lot of the, the words that she was teaching and things like that. Well, but when I came across like very fluent Spanish speaking people, I did struggle a lot. And I had to, you know, ask my mom for like, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? And now, like, I, I know a lot more, but still, I don't have the confidence. As much as other others do speaking in Spanish, because I do get so conscious about my Spanish, my accent especially. Um, and there's so many different dialects and accents that I, when I do speak Spanish, others have told me like, "Oh, you have a very neutral sound," and I'm like, "Yes," but then that also makes me self-conscious so because I'm like, "Okay, well, what is, well, I have, you know, my parents are from Peru, like I should have an accent, right? I guess maybe like." And it's just so different. Everybody has a, a, a different background, a different upbringing. And there is this shirt that I have. It says Latina Power. And I've also seen other shirts, shirts that say Latina Enough. And, my, and that touched me so much because growing up there, you know, whether if you don't know how to salsa, if you don't know how to speak Spanish, you know, fluently and with an accent, you're not Latina enough or you're not Latino enough. And that's not true. You know, you have, everybody has a heritage, everyone comes from somewhere. And just because you don't maybe emulate all of that outwardly, doesn't take away from that. So I say embrace what you have, embrace your family, and just love who you are. You're enough. You're a Latina enough. Thank you, that's a good question. Wepa. Uh, who were some of your voice acting inspirations growing up as a little girl? Great question. That is a great question. I so, need a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a great answer, but as a child, like I said when I was seven, voice acting was such a new world for me. Usually, a lot, you know, it's TV actors and movie actors that really, you know, you're accustomed to, and you're like, oh, what's a voice actor, you know? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. not real? What? <laughs> <laughs> and without social media back then, you couldn't what someone looked like to their character um, unless you really wanted to go on the internet which took forever and you would hear that <laughs> yeah so like, you got you mail know, unless you knew them from some way you didn't really know who the voice actors right. were unless you met them also so i didn't really have anyone that i looked up to i didn't know who to look up to when i was voicing her um but now like seeing Meeting voice actors like Tara Strong, um, you know, she would be someone I want to be one day Absolutely. for sure. I think we all want to be yeah. Tara Strong. Yes, yes, exactly. But thank you, good question. Do you have any favorite characters that stood out to you, even if you didn't know the actor behind them? Um, I mean, SpongeBob was a big one for me. I loved him. Um, <laughs> and then Patrick and the whole, the whole game. Um, I was very into Fairly Odd Parents, nice. you know, that was a big one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, you know, animation, I feel like I was very into growing up. 
but Sesame Street too was a big one for me growing up. Uh, Barney. <laughs> hey, come on. It's just an era. Yeah, that's kind of like my time growing up. Or like what, weren't you on Sesame Street, Street too? Yeah, I was on a few episodes of Sesame Street. But, yeah. <laughs> Hello, friend. I was wondering if you've ever wanted to like voice act in the future, maybe someone from um, another show or like um, someone in Dora. Have you ever wanted to voice act someone else? Yeah, so I, you know, after I went to college, I was still doing voice acting here and there and auditioning very little. Um, and I was working in the corporate world. I had a job in interior design. And just recently, about a few months ago, I quit my job. Okay, okay. And I'm pursuing voice acting again full time. So, yeah. I hope and my goal is to voice um, new characters, whether big or small. It would be nice to have like, another iconic role, but I, you know, I, I really want to get into it and, and practice my voice and play around with it and see what other sounds I can make and what comes out. So I'm excited. Yeah, so definitely, watch out. Exactly. We're gonna be singing. Hello. Um, what was your favorite part about voicing Dora? Yes, I love the singing. So I love to sing. Um, and I think someone mentioned it. The Dora's Fairy Tale Adventure was one of my favorite episodes. If you know me, you already know that already. Um, but I always love the music. They always try to put in like the, the salsa like elements in the background and it was just I loved it so much and we recorded like CDs too. I got to sing with uh, I didn't meet them but I'm on the same track with like Siggy Marley and like Gloria Stefan. So like big people and it, that to me was like so cool. Um, but from the episode there's this one song that I love to sing so I'll sing it for you. Um, she's in front of like these rocks and she has a music box to make them sing. So Here's a magic music box. If you play it near these rocks, boingy, 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 they will get these rocks to sing. And I just love it. I love that. It's a music box. So good. Music makes it better. Always does. Can I just tell you, like, at, at such a young age, you have like a resume of music on collaborators that is better than most people will ever have. No, it's crazy. I have like, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you're a younger dude when I grow up, that's what I want, yes. Hello, friend. Hola, Kathy, come on, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. My question is for you is, um, where do you see Dora and all the other characters from the show uh, in the future, like, growing up? Like, oh, where do you see them now? Like, this wife is still swiping? Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny because on, online and YouTube and every, everyone has, like, their own idea of, like, where they are and what they're doing now. Um, but yeah, I would like to think Swiper is not swiping anymore. He is maybe like a teacher or something yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah, yeah. like, you know, trying to give back and, you know, kind of repay for see, what he's yeah. done. Swiper rec center for lost teachers. Or, you know, he lived on Blueberry Hill, so maybe he's a merchant now and selling blueberries. There we go. Maybe, possibly. Um, I would love to think that Dora is like a full-time explorer, adventurer, historian, archaeologist, something like that. Does she have a family? Yes, of course. She needs a family. She needs her support system. Backpack is still in the picture. She also has a mini backpack. You know, we all wear like little satchels, little like things. So there's going to be a backpack in right. the Accessories are a big thing, you know. Of course, of course. Um, the map is still around. Maybe he's digital. You know. This is brilliant. Yeah. Well, I think we're starting something good. Yeah, yeah. Boots is still around, has to have a family. Maybe he's, he's been working out and he's got some muscles now. <laughs> hey, he's listening. I don't know. I would literally play this game. Like, come on, play section. Make this game. happen. You know what I'm saying? Better than this. All right, sit down. That's a whole different mobile. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What's going on? Hi. Hi. Uh, so, what do you first heard the news that there's going to Live action Dora movie. How did? What was your first reaction? How did you feel after the movie was all done? <laughs> when I heard about it, I was like, Oh my goodness! I need to be a part of it. They didn't call me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. 
executives have the final say. Remember the people of the boards. Try doing that thing to your boss. You guys can do it. If you were in charge of the child, what do you wish to do to your boss? It's hard to figure out. And it was a great movie. I don't know if you guys saw it. I felt like it was What great movie? What movie was it? The Dora Live Action movie. I thought it was really good. I thought it was funny. I thought they, you know, they played off of her really well. Um, and it was funny because Danny Trejo, who was also here, did the voice for Boots, so I got to meet him. And I was like, "Happy Dora!" Like, oh, you guys are in the movie. I was like, "I know." I know. Why didn't you call somebody? They should have gave me like, the lead. They should have gave me the part of the mother at least. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, I feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dora's mom. <laughs> I should direct it. You know what? They were afraid that you were just shopping too much. Exactly. And that's when they were like, let's just go back to where, where it came from. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I did enjoy it. You know, it was sad not to be a part of it. But uh, yeah, it, it still brought Dora back to life. It brought sure. her back in front of people. And that's the most important part. Yeah, I love that. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. My last question is when it comes to acting, what is the next big thing that you would love to do? Or not just acting, but entertainment. Would you love to do? Is it strictly acting? Would you like to direct, write something? What would you like to do? Um, I would definitely like to explore more voice acting. Okay. Um, like I said, I really want to learn what I can do with my voice. I feel like we all have a lot of power with our voices. Um, and there's a lot of things that I believe we can unlock. And I just want to figure those those things out. I mean, there's other things that I kind of want to do separately from acting, but which I mean, do one thing like at a time because, as I told you, like I'm mean, like all over the place. I want to be this, 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 and this. So <laughs> trying to stay focused um, and trying to do that and see what else comes from it. You know, I'm I'm a very I go with the flow type of person. Of I like to take chances um, as long as it works for me, right. and that's what I want to do. I want to see what doors open up. Talk to people, talk to you guys, meet people. Yeah, and just see where it goes. I'm excited for the adventure. Yes, see you never know what's going to happen. That's what I love. Even coming to here, you, you meet so many people, you meet so many cool people, vendors, like, you never know where you're going to meet, who you're going to talk to. Boston, do me a favor and make some noise and show all the love to this guy. Yes. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Adios.